Welcome to the 47th annual meeting for the European Society for Dermatological Research. My name is Brendan Lee, and I'm a fourth year medical student from the University of New South Wales, Sydney, Australia. Today, I'm going to give you a little talk and run you through my poster named Methods for Grading Severity of Ocular Involvement in Patients with Mucous Membrane Pemphigoid, which I will now be referring from now on as MMP. So before I begin, I'd like to thank the ESDR for this opportunity to present my poster and also my supervising professors, Minus Coronio and Didi Morel. So let's begin. So we looked at a review on the literature for the scoring tools for the ocular involvement in MMP. So we noticed that the ocular involvement in MMP is actually a very severe disease and can occur in 64 to 89% of MMP patients between the ages of 30 to 90 and with a female predominance. This is thought to occur because of a similarity between the embryonic development of the eye and the skin. What happens is the disease leads, sorry, the uh, ocular involvement leads to a disease known as ocular scarring disease or ocular surface disease. And this is because there is a citrusizing conjunctivitis or scarring conjunctivitis that leads to very severe complications like subepithelial sub sub fibrosis, fornix foreshortening, corneal neovascularization, ulceration of the cornea, and even total vision loss. We also noticed that dry eye disease has been mentioned in the literature. And I'll just show you some of the photos. So as you can see here, these eyes look very different from what a normal healthy eye should be. And you can notice that the bottom of the eye normally is very scarred and you can't actually pull the lid down properly. So basically we did a review of the literature from three different databases, Medline, Embase and Scopus. And the search terms are shown there for you to have a look at. And we did this review from November 2016 to June 2017. Now let's talk about some of the results. So the first thing we saw was we noticed that there were very traditional scoring tools that were first created to look at measuring this ocular involvement. And I will walk you through them now. So the first one we see is done by Foster in 1986. And this was a four grading system that looked at different signs in the eye. So some of them are listed there. So subconjunctival scarring, fornix foreshortening, symblepharon, to name a few. This was then followed by Mondino and Brown in 1987, which looked at percentage loss of inferior fornix depth and again gave a four grade system. In 1992, Tauber then conglomerated these two scores together to create a more comprehensive one that looked at disease signs and percentage loss. So these were the traditional ones uh, and the ones that were first created to kind of give a score for the ocular involvement in MMP. And what you can kind of notice from these scores is that they're mainly damage based or looking at the area of the eye involved. So this causes some limitations because it doesn't look at the current disease state or the current disease such as inflammation that could be occurring in the eye. It only looks at what has already occurred in terms of damage, okay? And now I'll come back to this topic a bit later in the talk. So let's look at some of the newer systems that have arisen uh, since then. So the first one is this Rousey system. So this looks at measuring the eye from three different points, the five, six, and seven o'clock, and uses a very uh, clear measurement in millimeters. So this is a more accurate quantification of the area of involvement. And this was then followed by Reeves in 20, uh, 2012, and this included a vertical and horizontal grade. So again, getting a much more comprehensive and um, uh, accurate. And I have, uh, you can see there. And even uh, alongside these uh, scoring tools, we also saw the development of new technologies. So that new technology was this, uh, these custom designed Fornix measurement tools and I'll show you what they look like in uh, figure A. 
And you can see that in figure B, C, D, and E, these measurement rulers are basically placed into the eye, uh, whether it be the top or the bottom fornix, and actually give a very accurate measurement because it's a ruler uh, that's curved to the structure of the eye. However, even with these new developments, there are still some limitations because these patients' eyes are normally very scarred and you can't actually lift the lower or bottom lid very far. This means that it's sometimes very difficult to put these rulers in. And furthermore, these rulers are measuring the 2D surface area on a 3D structure, which in itself has some problems. And finally, because of this scarring I mentioned, the variations in measurements are very significant because a patient can change over a few uh, weeks and months and the measurements can vary very significantly if they have a particularly bad day or a day where their eyes are a bit harder to measure than normal. So now looking at the very recent literature, in 2017, a uh, international Delphi consultation was completed on ocular surface disease. And this mentioned a lot of the incongruencies that already existed. And in particular, this study or this paper pushed this new toolbox of different signs and scores that could be used to give a more comprehensive assessment. It also uh, explained the importance of delineating between damage and activity. So damage is what has already happened in the disease and cannot be changed, but activity is what the disease is currently doing to that patient. And this can actually be changed or modified using treatments or uh, other methods. Okay, and this is actually very important. So we come to the conclusion that for ocular involvement in uh, MMP, there is uh, scoring tools that look at damage and quantification of the area involved, but non, none, none of the tools really look at the activity. And this is really important to incorporate together into a comprehensive score because that would then provide uh, better evaluation of uh, new medications and treatments in clinical trials, as well as provide better long-term monitoring of diseases, of, of the progression of disease in a patient, and finally allow an appropriate selection of treatment for that patient's severity. So furthermore, these tools would provide a standardized score, and this score or number would be very useful in providing commonality among doctors of all languages and specialties, and this is particularly important because this, these groups of diseases, or MMP, require um, care from many different doctors. So with that, I'll leave you um, with uh, a fact that I started this review at the beginning of this year, uh, beginning of my research year, and throughout the rest of the research year, I have been doing a prospective study recruiting MMP patients and other diseases that are similar to MMP, such as uh, epidermolysis, spulosa, and other autoimmune diseases, recruiting them to get a comprehensive eye check to document the severity and range of ocular involvement, and then hopefully create a scoring tool that can then be used and potentially validated in the future. And with that, I'll, give you, I'll leave you with the literature that I looked at while doing this uh, review and some of the key ones. And Thank you very much for your attention and I hope you found this presentation interesting.